Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Gary A. Swaby, and you're now listening to the Snowfall Aftermath. And this week, we will, we'll, we will be recapping Snowfall Season 5, Episode 8, and the title of the episode is Celebration. And I'm here with Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. How are you doing, Richard? Doing good, Gary. What's up, listeners and viewers? <laughs> What's up, indeed? I, I see you were uh, Jerome and Louis' wedding DJ, huh? That, yeah, that, uh, the party the party was was lit. It was all the way lit. Did you get high? <laughs> oh no, because I'm because because much like Wanda, I'm also allergic to chocolate. So, uh, which oh. I think is very interesting. I never heard of somebody being allergic to chocolate. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Um, cool. So, yeah, this was a very interesting episode. I'm hearing a lot of uh, different reactions about this episode and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, we're, we're going to get right into it. So the way this show works is um, Richard and I, we both give our takeaways, um, you know, our personal things that stood out to us from, from the episode. And, you know, um, then after that, we have a questions and discussion segment where we have more of a back and forth about some of the topics, you know, that came from, from today's episode. Um, and yeah, before we get to that, I just want to give everyone a quick reminder to, you know, please support the show. Please hit the like button, leave your comments and subscribe to the channel. You know, all that stuff is important, but definitely the like button and the comments that that's important because it, it helps us grow. It helps to keep us motivated. It helps us to, to, to keep coming back and doing this again and again. You know, because, uh, you know, the, this isn't our main, this isn't our, like, main job or anything. Like, this isn't our work. We do this, you know, in our free time. So, you know, hitting that like button helps to just support us, you know, because we don't, we don't have, like, any monetary model where we're asking people for money or anything like that. So the yeah. least you can do is, is just hit that like button because that really helps us out. So please do that. Um, so, yeah. We are going to begin with our takeaways now, and um, I believe it is my turn to go first this week. So um, I'm going to go right ahead and give my takeaways. So um, let me see here. There's so many notes. So yeah, um, I guess I'll start with the whole LSD thing. You know, so we <laughs> see, we see um, you know, at the, the first part of the wedding, we see Scully, you know, he's, he's standing up while everyone's sitting down. You know, and then he approaches the lady who's kind of doing all the catering and stuff and sorting all the, the food and the treats out and the drinks. And, you know, he's asking her questions about, you know, oh, you're going to give everyone some of that chocolate? And, yeah, um, he basically sends her away to get him a drink or something. And then, you know, we don't see what he actually does, but we know he's up to no good at that point. Um, and he actually considers this his wedding treat to, to Jerome and Louis. So that's that's quite hilarious. Um, but yeah, so throughout this episode, we see that everyone is basically getting high off of LSD. Um, you know, not everyone does. Wanda doesn't, which is great. Um, but most of the guests are getting high, you know. Um, and a lot of the scenes that we saw foreshadowed in the trailer and everything, it's basically people tripping off of the LSD. Um, you know, a lot of the Franklin shots and stuff like that. Um, so Franklin really was like the main kind of like focus of this. Um, and we see him go through a lot of different, um, you know, a lot of uh, different things in his mind that are kind of plaguing him, I guess. Um, you know, we see, you know, things about Veronique. We see uh, things about Teddy. We see, you know, that there's just a lot of things that he's kind of addressing in, internally. And we even get the scene near the end where he's kind of talking to himself, you know, um, which was, you know, really, really good scene, which, you know, Richard kind of pointed that out earlier when we were speaking about it in private. Um, so I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say about that again. But yeah, great, great acting for sure. Um, I know, uh, I know Dams and Idris said that he was really proud of this episode. Um, and he did do an excellent job of playing someone who, who's, who's high. Um, and, you know, just some of the, the, the scenes throughout, you know, he did, a, he did an excellent job with it. Um, now, the LSD thing, it, it could be, it could be seen as a cheap thing to do. 
um, because, you know, everyone's tuning in to see what is going to happen. Like they want to see, you know, okay, what's going to happen with Kane? What's going to happen with Teddy? What's going to happen now that Louis talking to Teddy and everything? Like people want to see the, the, uh, the resolution of some of these plot threads, but instead we're, we're at the wedding and everyone's high. So it's like, you, you don't know what to take seriously in a sense. So a lot of people are probably going to be upset about that. But I think they did a great job with the writing, you know, within the realms of everyone being high. Like there was a lot, there, there was a lot of like hidden little gems in there that you can kind of extract and just kind of, um, you know, get, get a reading of where these characters are at in the story and where they could be going next. You know, there was a lot of that, like a lot of like analyzing of the characters. Because to me, it seems like things are about to get crazy in the next two episodes. So this is kind of like the last celebration sort of thing before, you know, everything changes and everything kind of crumbles, I guess. Because there's there's a lot going on right now. And it looks like it looks like Franklin's not going to be in a great spot by the end of this season, you know, by the way things are looking. So I think an episode like this is kind of welcomed because you know it's it's kind of like they're just there it's, it's the calm before the storm in a sense because you know it's like you know Jerome and Louis are getting married and you know we need to focus on this we need to show people being happy and people being calm and cheerful and you know because what is going to come next is going to be so crazy that there's just no coming back it's just going to be you know it's going to be uh it's going to be heavy after this, you know, it's going to be heavy emotionally. It's going to be emotionally draining afterwards. So I think it was cool to just kind of have this, you know, um, before, you know, before things get out of hand. So, yeah, I'm looking at it like that. I'm looking at it as like it was a chance for the writers to kind of have a bit of fun before, you know, all the heavy stuff happens. Um, and I think, you know, they did a great job with it. And I will make the comparison of, because I remember, um, I don't know if it was the first or second season, there was an episode, um, it might have even been the third, I can't remember, but there was an episode where I think it showed, um, you know, if Franklin never became a drug dealer, if he, if he like, was an honest person and, like, you know, he, he was successful at school and everything like that. Um, and I personally wasn't a huge fan of that episode back then. Um, and I would say that this wedding episode is way better than that, than, than that. So, um, just in my opinion, you know, because I didn't, I didn't very much like how that episode kind of took us out of the reality of what was actually going on. Um, I mean, it was, it was a cool thing that they kind of explored, but, you know, I still, I still didn't like it because it, it would just seem too out of, out of the realm of reality for me. Um, but this episode, you know, it's it's just, okay, it, it is really happening in real time, but it's just that they're high, you know, so I, di I didn't mind it so much. Um, and yeah, so um, I, I guess my next point is going to be like, so Louis, we see the, the episode actually opens with Louis meeting Teddy. So although Franklin is like a main focal point of this episode, this episode is also really the rise of Louis. Like it's her kind of making her move um, because Jerome has kind of taken a step back and he's, you know, he's being more wholesome. He's being more about Louis and wanting to fix the community. So he's kind of taken like a neutral, a neutral standpoint at the moment, whereas Louis is taking a step forward. And she's really trying to make a change now. Um, she's she's making a play for power, you know. And yeah, like the the episode just starts with that, you know. It starts with that, and then the episode also ends with Louis talking directly to Franklin. You know, they're they're dancing at the wedding. Um, so yeah, this whole episode is is about her also, um, and about the conflict that is coming between the two of them, Franklin and Louis. And of course, they pre, you know, they uh, they they uh, foreshadowed this earlier in the season where Franklin kind of threw a tantrum and and you know he was yelling at Louis and everything. Um, 
And yeah, I, I kind of liked that. Liked, I liked the whole setup and how it, it, it came full circle. And then also you had the moment where Franklin, um, he was talking to Teddy and, you know, he was telling him, I know that your plan is to kill me or whatever, but I'm going to kill you first. Now, that scene was was hilarious because he was actually calling Teddy in real time, it seemed like, like as he was saying this, like, because we thought, okay, he's just having another moment in his head, but he actually called Teddy. Uh, and I don't think he meant to do that, but he, he did somehow, you know, um, and Teddy actually heard those words that he said. So that is interesting that, you know, he actually said that that monologue to Teddy and now Teddy believes that Franklin um, has threatened to kill him. Um, and, you know, he we saw that he kind of reacted to that in real time, you know, with Parissa and everything. And then we saw him doing something with a bunch of documents later on in the episode. And, um, you know, this came after he was already meeting with Louis. So, yeah, it's not looking good for Franklin right now. I think some some pretty crazy stuff is going to come from that in the next episode. But, um, but, yeah, I just liked that, you know, although Franklin was a huge focal point in this, it was also all about Louis at the same time. And, and that is fitting because it was her wedding. It was her wedding day as well. So. You know, of course, she had to kind of be a major part of that, you know, her and Jerome. Um, and then also, you know, Gustavo was at the wedding and he was at he was at the meeting at, at you know, at the start of the episode with Teddy, with Teddy and Louis. So he knows that, but he didn't bring it up to Franklin or anything. I don't even know if they had a chance to talk before before they got high, actually. But but yeah, um, he didn't bring that up at all. So that that's kind of an interesting note as well. Um, and then, yeah, I liked going back to Wanda. I liked that she was one of the people who didn't get high, but she was coaching everyone who was high. Like I liked, I liked that because it shows her progression really well. Like the fact that she's a recovered addict, you know, and now she she's able to recognize that everyone is high and everyone's tripping out and she's looking after them and coaching them. So that was really cool to see. And then of course, you know, Leon, he offered to to kind of take her away and cause he wants to, you know, he wants to travel and leave the country or whatever. And he offered to take her away, um, but she knows that he's high and that's the only reason, you know, he's, he's probably saying that right now, but would he say it if he wasn't high? I think he would, but I think um, for her, she recognized the fact that, you know, you should have you should have been willing to say this when you was when you were sober as well you know so if you if you ask me to come with you when you're sober then maybe i'll say yes but you know at this moment i know that you're high and that's why you know you're actually asking me so yeah um i think it's cool that there's still something there there's still some kind of spark between those two and i think you know because sometimes when you're high i think the reality comes out, like the truth comes out of how you feel and stuff. And that's why we saw that stuff with Franklin, because this was all stuff that was in his mind. Um, so, you know, I think Wanda recognizes that, but it's just a case of, is Leon actually going to take action once he's sober again? Um, so that would be, you know, interesting to see, or maybe something happens to one of them. We don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, and then another interesting point for me was um, when Franklin had the conversation with Veronique uh, while he was high. Um, now it seemed like this this didn't act, this conversation didn't actually happen. Um, it was all in Franklin's mind, but just the fact of what Veronique was saying was pretty interesting to me, given that we've all been kind of questioning her. Um, so she said that, um, let's see if I can find a quote here. She said, um, I think I wrote it down. Yeah. So she said, the only way that we can survive is to betray you. You know, that, that was a line she said, you know, during that. Um, and yeah, like that just makes me, it makes me even more suspicious of her now. 
But at the same time, I know the writers have the ability to pull the wool over our eyes as well, because, you know, with the Peaches thing, you know, we were all like, okay, he's got AIDS, he's got, you know, he's got HIV, he's got the bug. Um, but but then, you know, it turns out to be, you know, that he, he was scared of Franklin because he because of what he did to Rob and he was on the pipe and he, you know, he just decided to rob the stash and get away. Um, now he could still have AIDS though. We we but we just don't know. But um, but yeah, it seems like the, the writers do have the ability to make us think one thing, but then it's not actually that way. Um but with Varonique, I don't know, it's just, there's just too much that they've shown that makes me still not trust her, you know, even even if she is pregnant or whatever, like, but just the fact that she said her mother was a scammer. Um and you know, even in this episode, like going to see Kane at the start, it's like, okay, I know, I know the intention. Like, you want to make sure you're safe and everything, but you really went into the wolves' nest. Like, you went into, you know, you, you went to the wolves directly with no security, no nothing. You went there. You felt that comfortable to do that. You know, it's like there's just something, something off about her. There's something not quite right. And then, you know, this monologue, I think even in Franklin's mind, he's like, you know, he, I think he's curious about if she could betray him or if if the betrayal could come from her. So, you know, um, that, but it's interesting that they would, you know, they, they would have her say those words. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, if that's a prelude to anything. Um, and then also, um, yeah, I think that's it. That's it for me. Like, those are the key things that stood out. And just, you know, Dams and Idris definitely did a great job in this one uh, with the acting. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, even though it wasn't the kind of episode we expected it to be, I, I still very much liked it, you know, for what it did. Because it gave us enough, you know, without... Um, without going overboard, it gave us enough to kind of set up where we're leading to next, I think. Um, and then, you know, just the way it ended, it, it like, that was a hell of a cliffhanger right there. Like, um, and, you know, Louis, of course, she had a drop the mic moment when she said, you know, um, it's too, it's, it's already too late, you know, cause Franklin was telling her, I should have made you a partner. I should have valued you more. And it's not too late to do that. And Louis was like, yes, it is too late. And then, you know, of course you see, <laughs> you see uh, Buckley, you know, he's, he's getting ready to, 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 to pull the hit, the hit job on Kane. So we see her actions in motion basically. Um, so yeah, that was, I, I know a lot of people are probably going to be angered because they're going to be like, damn, I wanted, that's why I wanted to see, that's why I tuned in to see right there. And then it, it finishes, but you know, that's, that means they did their job. They left you in suspense and, you know, you're, you're going to be fiending for that next episode, basically. Um, you know, like you just tripped on LSD or something like you're going to be fiending for the next hit right now. So that's what they did, you know? Um, but yeah, that's my, that's pretty much my takeaways. Um, I'm keen to see what, you know, Richard's takeaways are going to be. Um, I know he's going to add some extra insight to all of that. So um, Rich, take it away and hit us with your takeaways. All right. First and foremost, excellent takeaways uh, from you, Gary, as always. Thank so, you. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. Let me start by just addressing the elephant in the room. Now, I know a lot of people, I saw a lot of reactions after this episode. A lot of people, they complained about the episode. I've seen comments like, oh, I miss John Singleton. I wish he was still around and involved with the show. Uh, just and, and, and I mean, the thing is, I understand that because there are a lot of things happening in the storyline that you definitely want to see progress. And this is an episode, like Gary said, where there are some important things, very minor things that did progress. But again, it really is about celebrating and enjoying these characters in one of their happiest moments because everything is about to go downhill from here. So my personal opinion is I thought the episode was was very entertaining. Um, Damson Idris did an outstanding job, you know, and so, I mean, and, and the thing is, is that he did make the comment that this is the moment he was most proudest of, 
But he also said that this is the episode where he it's his favorite episode of Snowfall and that everyone did an excellent job. And I agree in this episode because everyone, even though those that were tripping out on the LSD, they did a fantastic job. You know, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw Gustavo rolling around in that grass. It's just it, I mean, it was, it was hilarious. Um, and again, they, it was meant to really celebrate Louis and Jerome getting married and then just enjoying the happy times because things are about to get really intense from here on out. So before I get into the party, there are three key things that happened prior to that party. And I think it's important to, to talk about that, you know, to, prior to the wedding itself. Number one, as Gary mentioned, Louis meets up with Teddy at the beginning of this episode. And yes, Gustavo is there with Teddy. Basically, Louis is basically telling Teddy that I want to come to you directly and I will go to the Colombians if I have to, but I would prefer to just come and work with you directly. And he asks if Franklin knows, no. So, I mean, she already knows that there's going to be fallout with Franklin. And you do see that when she talks with Jerome, uh, you know, in this episode, prior to the wedding, she basically tells him that she she went on ahead and she met up with Teddy. Now, when we see Jerome, he does make mention that, you know, he hasn't lost his temper in three weeks. So there is a period of time that has passed. Um, they don't really go, you don't actually see those titles on the screen. Like I recall when he was talking about they was getting the, the tuxedo ready, that it was gonna it's gonna take about a week before it's ready. But you don't see any titles on the screen to know how much time has actually passed. So as a viewer, you just have to pay attention to what they're saying and then assume, okay, some time has passed since this particular thing happened. But yes, we do know that Jerome has some very, very specific lines in this particular conversation. He says he doesn't want to go to war with his blood. And yes, he acknowledges that Franklin is family, uh, but he will still defend Louis. But again, he doesn't really want to be in caught in between all of this. And again, Louis and Jerome know that Franklin is going to be upset. So from a writing standpoint, at the very beginning of the episode, it shows the, the betrayal before we even get into the celebration. And then it comes full circle in the end. But I thought that was very well done. Um, the other two two quick points that I want to mention before I get into the actual wedding itself. Sissy meets up with Ruben. And that's also important because this time she meets up with him outside a park and basically tells him the same thing that she said before. She does give him information that there is going to be a wedding and that anybody who is important, they're going to be at that wedding. So... Very interesting. And I'm going to come back to that later because that ties directly into something that happens once we actually get to the wedding itself. But she does tell him that information. And we do find out that the person he's working for is Tony. I believe the guy's name is uh, Tony Moreno. But that's important because this guy is the, is the same guy who had the female. Uh, uh, he, he had a partner that he was working with that Gustavo killed in a previous season. So I like that because, again, everybody's past is starting to catch up with them. Gustavo didn't really pay the price for killing her. And, you know, you wonder if he was going to eventually pay a price for it. It didn't happen yet. So now it is going to happen now because that guy, obviously, I don't, he doesn't like the fact that Gustavo was able to get away with killing his partner. So somebody's going to have to pay for that, including Teddy as well. So we'll see where that goes. And finally... The other thing that it does reveal is that prior to this uh, wedding, as Gary mentioned, Veronique decides she wants to visit Kane. And I thought this was a very interesting conversation that she had with Kane, where she basically asked him if it's okay for her to stick around or should, or, or, or should she leave? Basically saying that I know that Franklin and you are basically on peaceful terms, but is that for real? Is Franklin for real? Or should I leave? Because I'm very concerned about myself and our child. And he tells her, oh, well, Leon is the one that set up this deal. I'm going to keep my word so you don't have anything to worry about. That's very important because we already know that Louis has already set up this plan in motion to have Buckley take out uh, Kane. And to go to Gary's point of what he said that he doesn't trust uh, Verone, I understand that I still don't trust Verone. But I honestly feel like this foreshadowed the, the simple fact that Verona is probably that Veronique is probably going to get killed because you recall she decided to meet with Kane 
and said, okay, so am I safe? Do I have to worry? And he says, yes, the deal, as long as the deal is on the table and everybody agrees to do their part, everything is cool. You don't have to worry about anything. So once things do happen next week, Buckley decides to go after Kane and it will not be a successful hit. We do know that because we did see the trailer. Um, I'm pretty sure Kane is going to want revenge and he knows directly who to come after it because it would definitely hurt Franklin more than anybody else. If it's his woman and his potential baby that pretty much gets taken away from him. So I, I definitely think people need to pay attention to that because that was a very important conversation. It was just so random for her to show up because I know people have had theories that, Oh, Maybe she could be messing around with Kane. Maybe that's actually Kane's baby. Now you know for sure that, yes, Franklin, that is Franklin's baby. And I believe that character is in trouble. Um, we'll have to see what happens to that character. And we'll also have to see whether or not that character has other secrets that she's still keeping close to her vest, which I think could be the case. But we'll find out because there's only two episodes left. Now, to get into the whole thing with this wedding. I thought it was very well done, actually. I mean, it's very entertaining to see characters just for, for a chance, they get to act a little bit silly. And again, everybody is high on LSD. The whole thing of Scully having this be a wedding gift, that made perfect sense with the character because now you see the stuff that he was taking, tripping off, off of and how it impacted everybody. But what I love about it is that it revealed, made people a lot more vulnerable around each other and how they interacted with each other. And I think that's important. Take, for example, that Sissy, you know, she was talking with Jerome because Sissy is the one that, that discovered. She was the one that knew exactly what this was, LSD acid. And she tells Jerome and Jerome is like, oh, people, that's kind of crazy. People are going to be worried about them. But he's still, he's still laughing, you know, still playful. Because again, they're under the influence of the acid. But, you know, everybody was all, you know, you know, hugging up on everybody. We saw a scene where Franklin picks up uh, Wanda. I thought that was I thought that was pretty crazy. Yeah. But it's just like it's the effects of of the drug itself in their system. And we saw Franklin had about four of those chocolate covered strawberries. So it made sense that he would hallucinate the most because of how much he had and not knowing what it actually was. So I thought that was great. Um, what I also what I also love about it is that. Just to, let's stay on. Let's stay on Sissy for a second. It's in this particular moment when she's finally at this party, and then she sees Ruben. Oh, he's actually serving drinks, so he's there undercover as a bartender. You know, I guess a waiter serving drinks to everybody, and then she thinks that he is the one that potentially spiked the spiked the chocolate that got everybody you know high. But it's important because she sees that she says, you know, now she has regret. Maybe I went too far getting him involved. And I just want you to go away and leave my family alone. It's too late now because now they're in it. And this goes back to the point that I said earlier about this Tony guy being involved now, because we know that he obviously is not happy that Teddy and Gustavo still got away with the fact, the fact that he lost his partner. So all of this is playing into the role of everybody is going to eventually get taken down. And these are the people that are going to play a key role in taking them down. So, it was important because Sissy got her moment to realize, okay, I went too far teaming up with these people, and now I have to be concerned about what's going to happen as a result of that. Also, for Franklin, a big episode for Franklin in, in regards of everything that he went through with the hallucinations, the fact that he sees Rob and has a conversation with Rob and Rob shoots him because he's still dealing with the regret of having to do that. But again, he's only looking at the fact of, well, I couldn't trust him at that point, so I had to do it. And Rob is saying, no, I would have all, I would, I still would have had your back. I would not have, I wouldn't have done that to you. But again, you understand why Franklin has doubt because he said at the very beginning of this season, this is the, he has the most pressure on him that he's ever had. And you also are bringing a kid into the world. So I understand you can't take any risk with anybody. You're going to do what you feel is in your best interest. But they needed to have this where he had these moments. And then, then, of course, they had a scene where he, of course, he has his exchange with his mom. That gets very heated. Then he has a scene with uh, Veronique showing up to the door, and she puts the doubt in his mind. These are the things that you're thinking about, that you're doubting. And yes, as Gary alluded to, the whole line about we survive by betraying you, that is very important because it's basically saying that everybody, you cannot trust anybody in the family because 
they may have an ulterior motive. If they, if they feel as though they're in trouble, then they're going, they don't have a problem putting you out there because you're the one that's exposed now. Yes, you did a great job deciding to get into this business and you brought a whole bunch of profit and money to the family, et cetera. Everybody is wealthy, but that comes with a cost. And it comes with a cost when things start to get a lot more dangerous for everybody that is involved. So I think it was important for all these things to, to happen, for you to, for you to see that stuff. Uh, also, we did see at the at the party, I want to mention this, this is important. We did see Johnny and Candy return. That is, of course, you know, Louis. A cousin and her husband, and of course Johnny, who also plays Jannard on Power Force. So shout out to him. The actor's name is Chris Lofton. But um, we did get a chance to see pretty much that they are obviously they're living a better life. They're a lot more wealthy. You know that you know they did feel the effects also of the LSD. Of course Johnny did because he had a fist fight with Big Dion. That's uh, Leon's uh, one of Leon's uh, right hand men. Men. Uh, yeah, this, everyone was processing being high off of this stuff a certain type of way. I will say, however, I do believe we need to see more of what's happening in Arkansas with those particular characters. You saw them at the wedding. That's cool. But I want to see how this stuff has impacted Arkansas. And you notice that their kid, they, the, the son, was not at the wedding. I don't know if the son, if the son is still in the picture or whatever. We don't know anything about any of that stuff. So hopefully we do get that. As Louis and Jerome decide to venture out and do their own thing, they're going to actually explore that more. Uh, and the other thing I thought was interesting is that you did see that we did see Franklin acknowledge him in the episode, and he was very friendly with them as if he knew as, as if he knew them. We never saw Franklin actually introduced to those characters at any point in the show. Obviously, that's just something that you know. Obviously, you know you don't want to think too much about because they're not going to show you everything that happens, but you can assume. Once Louis brought them in, they eventually met Franklin. That's fine, but we didn't never saw that interaction. So I was a little surprised to see that interaction in this episode as if they were already cool, so on and so forth. So we'll see about that. But um, to finish off a couple of things, the final couple of things I want to mention about the wedding itself is that, yes, I think it was important because the big scene that Debs and Idris had where he talks to his older self, what have I become? That was excellent acting. I mean, I just, I, I mean, it's excellent acting. It's excellent acting, but it's also, it was needed because you need to know what the character was dealing with. And I agree to what you said earlier, Gary, about episode, I believe it was episode 10 of season four. Uh, and it had all of those, it showed you the path that Franklin could have taken. I think the reason why that episode was a little off and disappointing for a lot of people was because prior to that episode is when Franklin got shot. So when the episode starts, it's going into all of this other stuff that would have happened. And you don't find out what actually happens to Franklin until damn near the end of the episode. So I understand exactly why criticisms were for that episode. I did like the fact that they did dedicate it to John Singleton, of course. But I understand exactly why this episode was better because of all the things that it progressed with the characters and basically all of the foreshadowing that it did. And again, as you mentioned, we had the scene where Franklin calls Teddy, and that's actually a, something that actually happened in reality. So, of course, Teddy is freaking out. He wants to get access to Franklin's money, and this sets things in motion. And then finally, the final scene of the episode where Louis and, and, and uh, Franklin, they have their little dance together. He tries to reason with her, saying, yes, I should have treated you better as a partner. She tells him it's too late. And then she betrays him with a kiss. And that is the perfect bookend to the episode because at the very beginning of the episode we saw louis louis betray franklin by going to work with teddy behind his back and it felt like this whole episode slowly but surely when he got that whole thing about betrayal 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 that's what it was leading to so i feel like at that very moment at the end the final scene franklin knew okay louis has done something to betray me he doesn't know exactly what that is yet but the next episode, I think he's going to be very angry when he finds out exactly what it is because she betrayed him twice. Number one, by messing up the, day, the, deal, the deal that they have with Kane, and number two, by working with Teddy behind his back. So I kind of feel like you needed to see them in this episode at their highest moments because now everything is about to get really, really crazy and go downhill. And I believe that Franklin, the character that you knew, is going to be a lot more ruthless I could, now I definitely could see him killing killing somebody close to him. I can see it happening now because if something happens to 
his mom or Veronique in the next episode, uh, that will set the wheels in motion where I think, you know, I think everybody should watch their back. So I'm looking forward to it. But yes, great episode. Um, I understand it's not going to be an episode for everybody because they want to see the story progress at a, a rapid pace, but they needed to get to this point because it's just, it's just, it's assurance that when you, when you go back and you watch this show later, you're going to remember this episode and be like, this is when everything was, it was just, it felt like everything was great. Everybody was on great terms with, with each other and they were celebrating something special because I think after this moment, nothing will ever be the same with any of these characters. So I look forward to seeing it, but yes, awesome episode, and I uh, can't wait to see what happens next week. Oh yeah, excellent takeaways. Like uh, I, I really enjoyed your your take on on everything, and you brought up some stuff that you know that I kind of uh, missed in in my takeaways. So, so yeah, excellent job there. Um, and yeah, we are gonna dive deeper into some of those things also that you brought up because uh, indeed nothing will be the same um <laughs> no it won't be <laughs> yeah we're gonna dive much deeper now um when we, like get to our questions and discussion segment but i just want to give everyone another reminder please do hit the like button please do chime in on you know all of the stuff we're talking about chime in in the comments let us know your thoughts um, you know, I, I really do like the audience we have on this show because people are constantly like, you know, dropping their theories and thoughts and stuff like that. And I love it. I love reading all of it. So please do continue to do that. Um, and yeah, just make sure you're hitting the like button and consider subscribing too, because we also cover some other shows that you might like, you know, like, uh, you know, um, power of course is, is the big one. Uh, we've got some stuff up based on, you know, Atlanta and, you know, some other shows that you guys might be into. And uh, we're talking about other stuff that we might cover in the future also. So please do, you know, consider subscribing and, and just keep supporting. We love it and we appreciate you. Um, so, yeah, let's get deeper now. Let's get deeper into some of these topics that, um, you know, have, have been brought up after this episode. So uh, before we get to some of the ob obvious things we need to address here, um, I want to ask you about Leon because um, he might be one of one of the characters that he might be one of the characters that people didn't pay enough attention to in this episode because he was there, but he was very much in the background. Um, and of course, we we had touching moment where Franklin kind of, we, we don't see this side of Franklin often, but he actually told Leon that he loves him and he can understand why he wanted to, you know, get out of the life and everything. Um, so yeah, th there was that touching moment. But throughout this episode, Leon was saying that he kind of wants to leave, um, you know, he wants to travel and do all these things. Um, you know, somebody planted, I think it was was it was it Avi he was talking to and he was saying something about moving to Ireland, uh, which was hilarious. Um, but but yeah, um, I wanted to ask you, do you really think that Leon will try to leave in these next couple of episodes? Like, is he going to try and like leave the city or leave the country? Uh, well, he doesn't have a passport, I don't think, but so he can't leave the country. But is he going to try and make some sort of exit plan? um in these next couple of episodes because it seems like that's where his heart is um and he's kind of been building up to this like throughout this season he's kind of he's kind of in a sense had had similar thoughts and feelings as jerome where he kind of wants to get out of the life and actually build the community and help people and things of that nature you know like he he's very he's he's been very much pro-black in this season um, like he wants to kind of, you know, uplift the people instead of like poisoning the community and stuff like that. So do you think he is going to try and execute some, some sort of exit plan, um, in this season? So what do you think about that, Rich? Um, I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up because that's one thing that I didn't really mention it in the takeaways, but it is important. Um, he does have an interaction with Wanda at the, towards the end of this episode where he tells her he wants to move to Africa and he wants her to come with him. Uh, they do make mention in this episode that Wanda basically, 
she she does collections now working with uh, working with the business that Franklin you know he that he that he has started up so she's been doing a good job but um she's a little taken aback when he says that and she's asking why didn't you tell me this sooner so to answer your question i mean we now know that snowfall is going to have a final and sixth season um well, I, I personally think that Leon, it probably still needs to be around for a little bit longer because this situation with Kane, it's not really going to start to get crazy, I think, until the next episode. I think after the next episode, when Kane realizes that he's been betrayed, I'm pretty sure he's going to blame Franklin and Leon to an extent because they were the ones that had that deal. Um, and I think because of that, uh, it's going to make Leon's uh, job a little bit more difficult and li life a little bit more difficult for him. So he has to come to an understanding of that situation because I don't think that Kane is going to get killed. I think Kane could eventually, I mean, obviously we did see in the season trailer, Kane is in the hospital. I don't think that Kane is going to get killed this season though. That could lead, that can go right into next season. Um, I mean, I, 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 I have no idea, but what I do know is that, I do believe Leon is going to put together an exit strategy. The question is, is he going to have a happy ending and be actually able to get out? Because what I do believe about this show is that a lot of people, a lot of people are going to pay for the crimes that they've committed. I don't think everybody is going to get away free. And the whole thing about Franklin saying that he wants to kill Teddy is very interesting because I don't think that Teddy, Teddy had it, had it in his mind to kill Franklin. Obviously, you know, you know, you can't trust them, but I mean, but the way that they've been making the Teddy character out to kill people in the last, in this season, in the previous season, I think, yes, he would definitely try to kill Franklin now. And especially now that he's also heard what Franklin said in that phone call, even though Franklin was high when he was talking to, talking to Teddy. So um, to answer the question though about Leon, I think Leon is going to plan an exit strategy, but it's a question of, will he actually be able to get away? And get and get out free. I know a lot of people love the character, um, but I really think it all depends on what happens between him and Kane after all this stuff goes down with Buckley trying to take out Kane, because it's definitely going to fracture that relationship. I think uh, he's going to question whether or not he can trust Leon because Leon knows Louis and Jerome, and that's why I say it's a very complicated situation that it puts everybody in jeopardy with and starts basically could start a war. So we have to see how that goes down. But I, I think Leon, unfortunately, he's still going to be around. Hopefully he doesn't get killed. But I, again, I, I, mean, I, I kind of feel like when I said last week, Leon or Jerome could get killed. I, I still feel that that's possible. Definitely. So we have to see what happens, but I think everything hinges on what actually happens between Bucky and Buckley and Kane next week. So we'll see about that. Oh yeah, because there, there's one hundred percent going to be some type of clapback or retaliation <laughs> after that hit, you know, after it goes wrong and everything. So, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, Leon is definitely in danger. Like he, you know, especially because he's the one who initially tried to speak to Kane. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the one who had the conversation with him. So he's going to, you know, instantly be one of the people that Kane thinks of. You know. Um, and of course, Veronique could be one of those people too. But you know, he he in his mind, he's going to be like, yeah, um, you know, we have, I have to get back at these people. Um, oh and, yeah. And Leon is in the streets every day. Like they know exactly where to go and get Leon because he's he's always at the same spot. So, yeah. I I, I agree a hundred percent. And also to go to the point that you said last week, which is that um, as far as uh, with the Kane situation. Um, I think that Kane might be a little disrespected that again, Franklin did not address him because in the previous episode, Leon, Franklin sent Leon to talk to Kane. In this episode, Veronique decides that she's going to talk to Kane, <laughs> but yet where's Franklin? And obviously Franklin is, is the, he doesn't know anything about this. So I do think Franklin is going to feel betrayed when he finds out that she did talk to Kane, obviously. Yeah. But that situation is that from Kane on the outside looking at it, he's probably thinking, why hasn't this guy talked to me directly? You have your friend and your girl talking to me, but you are not talking to me. The issue is between you and you and me. So I'm very curious to see 
what's going to happen, but I, I, I know it's not going to be positive. He's definitely going to think that Leon was behind this. Um, so it's just a matter of how is he going to re- retaliate? Is he going to take out Leon or is he going to go after Veronique? I think Veronique definitely moved to the front of the list as somebody he, he could take out now once this does go awry. But again, I have to see how they're actually going to play this out because I have no idea. But what I do know is that Leon definitely is in – everybody is, is, in, is in trouble now. Um, I think after Buckley decides that he's going to get involved because Louis told him, I need you to do this. So it's definitely going to have a ripple effect on everybody at the end of the day. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about the timeline of things because we know that from we know from the trailers there is a scene – where um, it looks like um, it looks like Kane is in hospital and Franklin approaches him while he's mm-hmm. in the hospital bed. So you know, I'm wondering if that is after the Buckley hit or if that is after the potential clapback. Um, that yeah, might that could be, be. Mm-hmm. So, that could be it. Yeah. So so yeah, that that would be interesting to know because that could be it could potentially be the first time Franklin comes face to face with him um or or maybe they do before that i don't know but yeah it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out next week uh, cuz it could go so many ways um but like we said before the beef is directly between franklin and kane because franklin is the one that you know decided to to do something to kevin mm-hmm. so, so it has to. It feel, I feel like it, there has to be some sort of resolution between those two. However, it ends. It has to be between those two characters, uh, and you know, it's just a matter of who who gets hurt or who potentially loses their life before that happens. You know, I think that's uh, that's uh, what's kind of at stake here. Like that's that's the question. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how how that pans out, but. Um, something makes me like something has me rooting for Leon though. Like just seeing mm-hmm. his journey throughout this season, I kind of want him to get his dream, but yeah. I just think it's going to happen, you know, because that's the reality of of the, of the the lifestyle that they've chosen. Um, you know, people don't get to to you know they don't get to live. First of all, they don't get to live till t- till later in life. Like usually, people don't even make it to like their mid or late twenties in this lifestyle. And also they don't get to see, you know, their full potential um, as well. So, you know, that's the sad reality of the lifestyle they've chosen. But something does make me root for him because he's been through a lot. Like, um, you know, even after last season, the stuff he he went through then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know he didn't mean to, uh, you know, he didn't mean to kill that child. Um, but that is something that he has to live with now as well. Um, exactly. So. So yeah, he's he's had it rough, and you know, even when he tried to get out last season, because that was something he said to Franklin at the end, like of that season, he was like, you know, I'm done with this. But Franklin basically forced him to to keep, you know, to keep selling drugs and keep uh, being in his his organization because he essentially saved him. Um, so so yeah, it's it's a very uh, troubling thing for him. And I'm still wondering if he, if there's potential he could run into Scully, and because you know he is the person responsible for Scully losing his, his daughter. So I, I'm still wondering if if those two characters are gonna, you know, come face to face and maybe have either a peaceful resolution or maybe Scully will try to retaliate. Still, you know. Well, that's a good that's a good point. I mean, I I, I know they were at the same wedding. I don't recall them having any. They didn't have any any act or any real act, any real uh, interaction, uh, at least from what I recall. But um, I, I you know I I, just, I kind of feel like yeah I, I understand exactly what you're saying to root for Leon because I also like the character. I think it would be positive to have at least one character make it out, but I just don't know how they're going how things are going to going to play out on the show. We are obviously I think we already know they will not end well for Franklin. They will not end well for Louis. We know that 100%. And Jerome is, is also caught in the, in between this as well. So I'm, I don't think anything's going to end well for him either. But um, we'll have to see how it goes now. But I, I doubt whatever happens, it's not going to be good, though. We know that for a fact. It's just a matter of seeing, though, really depends on what happens next week. Um, 
and seeing how that storyline progresses with all those characters. Indeed. So let's move on here. So um, uh, I have a lot of interesting questions here, but okay, <laughs> let's get to this one, right? So do you think there is any potential um, that Sissy, so we, we saw what happened, you know, with Sissy throughout this episode and Ruben mm -hmm. and the whole, the fact that they were recording at the wedding and stuff like that. This this KGB plan is already in motion now. Like she has set it off. She's told them, look, there's going to be a wedding. Everyone's going to be there. It's in motion. She can't stop it now. Yeah. Um, but she could continue to to keep working with them um, to bring down Teddy and everything. And I'm I'm sure that once Franklin is aware of what's happening, he's going to be thinking, I want to take down Teddy. So the question is. Do you think there's any potential that Sissy might bring bring Franklin in on the plan with KGB to take down Teddy? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. That's a good question. Um, well, let's well, here's the thing. This episode, as well as the previous episode, you saw Frank Franklin got very, very vocal with his mom and was talking back, yelling at her, and all this other stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of like he is questioning, what is she doing? She needs to be more involved in what's happening. So I kind of feel like the the other plan would be for him to work a lot, work with her to try and help these people to try to get get back at Teddy. Um, that's something that would potentially could and probably should happen. But I, I the thing is that I'm not really sure if that's what they're going to do here because one thing I will say and you probably was going to get into this at some point, is that because of what Louis is doing right now with Teddy, I kind of feel like the next logical step for that character would be for her to come to Buckley and say, Franklin, this is the person that you need to, to, to take into custody. Because it just if, if you're going to cut him out entirely, if you don't want to work with him, you have to get rid of him because we already know that Franklin is going to be very difficult and he's going to still want to be involved. So. I kind of feel like that's going to be the next logical step. And that could be something that happens at the very end of the season where that's what happens. And, and maybe Franklin has to go away for a while. I, I have no idea. But what, what I do think is that um, in terms of Sissy, at some point she probably is going to bring this to uh, Franklin's attention and try to get him on board. I don't know how he's going to take that because he's going to look at everything as betrayal. The fact that Louis betrayed him and then now my mom also betrayed me. And of course, when he finds out about Veronique going to Kane, you you betrayed me also. So I kind of feel like it's going to be very heavy on him at the moment. But I also feel like it's, it's 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 so important to say how everything is connected, right? Because I feel like if if there is a major death in the family, that's going to really make Sissy feel like okay, I need to cooperate with these people. Something has to. We have to work together to to eliminate Teddy. Just have all this go away. So if something happens to her brother Jerome, I kind of feel like, okay, maybe she does need to do whatever she can to get Franklin to cooperate. But the question is, will Franklin cooperate? And I and I, I don't I don't and I think that he's gonna have a really hard time doing that because he cannot trust anybody. So um, but coming from his mom, I kind of feel like he would at least consider it. But again, it's gonna be a very challenging situation because he can't trust anybody so far. So we have to see where that's going. But um, it's hard for me to say for sure. Um, but it will be interesting if she does bring that to his attention and tries to get him on board. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely. Um, and coming off of like this episode, because like we know he, he's dealing with the weight of Teddy having done something to his father and you know um during the scene where they're high and and he talks to his mother they kind of like have that conversation of you know like sissy says something mm -hmm. lines of like you care about like you know this white guy rob more than your father and you know you care about the money more than your family and all this mm -hmm. stuff. so you know this this is gonna weigh heavy in his mind and i think once he loses everything because to me, it looks like Teddy is going to take all of his money away. Mm -hmm. And then we 
we know that Louis has taken Teddy away from him. So <laughs> it's like he's he he literally has nothing after that, you know. Um w- without his money, without Teddy, he has nothing. Like, you know, it's just he he has to go back to the streets. So I think because he'll he's gonna feel so powerless and you know Teddy isn't a street dude where you can just go and kill him and find his supplier and say okay now you're gonna work for me you know because i killed teddy and teddy's not around he he can't do that with teddy because teddy is cia mm-hmm. so i think it's gonna leave him with little option as to what he can do you know he could either he could either take out louis and go back to teddy and say look there's no more louis now it's just me um he could do that or you know he could um you know if he learns about this KGB thing, he could, you know, use that. He can try and leverage that to take out Teddy. So, you know, um, and then, cause if he takes out Teddy, like that is like the biggest, like, that's the King chess piece right there. Like, you know, um, or the queen, I don't know. Cause I don't play chess, but you know, he is like, Teddy is the main chess piece here. Like if you take him out of the game, Louis has nothing also. So you get back at Louis as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like I think he he'll like he might be powerless and less left with little option, and you know with the guilt that he's feeling towards his mother and his father, I think that might be an option that he explores. You know, going with the the KGB thing, but I also agree with what you said about Louis and the fact that she might actually um, use Buckley to 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 get Franklin locked up. So, you know, that is something that could happen also. Um, yeah, I, I kind of yeah. feel like she, she, I mean, she knows. And the thing is, is interesting because when she has the conversation with Jerome and she tells him that, oh, well, I'll make Franklin understand why it has to be this way. We don't ever really get any understanding as to how she's going to do that. But I'm pretty sure that they both know Franklin is going to be very angry to hear this news. And you know that he's not going to just agree and go about business as just usual, just forget it. Okay, yeah, fine. You do you, I'll, you do you, and I'll do me. We know that's not what's going to happen because he's going to definitely want to get back in control, get to be the one that he's established his contact with Teddy. So that's why I say it's going to be very interesting to see what's going to actually happen in the next episode for many reasons. But, um, yeah, I mean it's 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 it's, it's a lot. It's it's a lot to unpack and think about, because Sissy is the one character that I'm, I'm sure Franklin he always has love for his mom, always going to try to do what he can to take care of her. But um, this particular situation, I feel like if she tells him all this information, he's gonna his reaction is, "Oh, you betrayed me. I can't trust you, and now I have to distance myself from you." But he can't really do that now if he has no one else but her. So that's why I said we have to see what happens. The other point that I do want to mention uh, is that I really hope that we get a definitive answer as to what happened to Alton at some point. They didn't answer that in two episodes left in this season. Every Everyone keeps saying, oh, Alton is dead. And then you have people also say he's alive. I would hope before this show was over, we get a definitive answer as to what happened because it doesn't make sense for him to kill Teddy if he doesn't really know exactly what happened to Alton. You have to get some type of confession for Teddy or some type of proof that Teddy actually killed him to actually move forward on this. So I hope that that is a plan that they can answer it. And maybe they just decided we're going to give, um, we're going to give Carol, the actor's name is uh, Carol, his last name. We're going to give him this season off and have him come back for season six. I mean, I, I mean, I have no idea, Kevin Carroll. I mean, I have no idea what they're going to do, but I hope that that answer is, solidified because i feel like as a, as a fan watching the show for them to have something like that at the end of last season as a as a cliffhanger and then you don't get no definitive answer to it yet i kind of feel like they have to be there's a reason why they haven't answered that question yet and it has and i hope that that is a very good payoff cuz right now i think that's important to know because it really tackles on why franklin will eventually do what he does if he is successful in killing Ted and teddy Oh yeah, I absolutely agree. Like they need to uh, really, they they need to uh, kind of tie up that thread because 
yeah, they left it lingering. They left it open-ended. We don't know if Alton's really dead, so they definitely need to confirm that. Mm-hmm. And I think I think the time for that to be confirmed is definitely coming up now, especially after Franklin has unintentionally threatened um, Teddy. <laughs> um, and we know that Teddy is, is now planning something. He's planning to take away everything from Franklin. Yeah. So that time is coming where, you know, we need to find out. We need that answer of did he really kill Alton? Um, otherwise, people are going to keep speculating that he's alive and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, we need that answer. Um, but, yeah, so I guess the next question is, um, what do you think the fallout is is actually going to be after Buckley's hit on Kane? Um, now, I'm... Like we know that there's a scene in in the trailer, in the teaser trailer, that um, where it looks like you know um, Buckley is being he's being disciplined or something by his superior, you know, at, at the police station or wherever. Um, so I'm wondering if if perhaps he's going to be severely punished for this. Like maybe he'll be suspended and then he won't be able to you know do anything for for Louis anymore. Um, cause you know, maybe, maybe Louie's already planning to have Franklin, um, taken away and, but she, she needs this cane thing to happen first. And yeah. then maybe her next move, you know, is, is okay. If Franklin, if Franklin doesn't take this well, I'm going to have Buckley deal with him. You know, maybe that is her long-term thinking, but if Buckley is suspended or he has his badge taken away from him or something, something of that nature, that kind of ruins her plan then. So I'm wondering if that is something that could potentially happen um, and that could leave Louis very vulnerable. Um, And maybe she would have to lean in on Scully instead, because I'm still trying to think what what is Scully's role going to be? We know that he did show up earlier in the season and he was causing some, some trouble, but they resolved that pretty quickly. And it seems like they have, like Jerome and Louis have a strong bond with Scully now. Um, so I'm wondering if she is going to utilize that connection at all. Um, but yeah, so, you know, what do you think is, is going to be the entire fallout from, from that hit? Because we know that some things might not go right and some people might, you know, um, some cops even might end up dead or something. So what, what do you think the fallout will be? So, uh, I, I believe that trailer, and, and, and anyone who saw the trailer, feel free to correct me in the comment section. I believe in that trailer that uh, Buckley's boss is telling him one of the officers got killed. He wants the explanation as to what happened and what and what's going on with that. With that, now what I think is going to happen is that this is the same boss that put pressure on Buckley to bring somebody in. So I think after this, in order to get back in the good graces of his boss. This is going to accelerate and make him force Louis to say, listen, you need to give me somebody because things didn't go as planned. So you need to hold up your end of the deal and give me what I need, which is the person that I can say is responsible for all of this. So I definitely feel it's heading in that direction where Franklin is the one that um, she's going to definitely present as as an option. Uh, Unless it's somebody else. I have no idea. But I, I think that's 100% what's about to happen in it, with this fallout, because obviously the whole hit on Kane is not going to go as planned. We know that for a fact. Um, so now you have to explain yourself as to why this, this whole thing went down. So if I had to make a guess right now, I would say, yes, it's going to put more pressure on Buckley to make sure his boss is please his boss. And the only way he's going to really get back on a positive terms with his boss is if he gives up somebody that is involved with all the stuff that's happening with the drugs. Yo, you know what? That that's an excellent point right there. Like you, you were definitely <laughs> a writer with you were thinking like a writer with that one. Um, because yeah, I could totally see that. Like that, you know, it, the boss is gonna come down on him and be like, okay, you know, to fix this. You need to give me someone, or or maybe the boss doesn't even say that, but maybe Buckley thinks, "Oh, I need to do this to get back in his good graces," mm-hmm. you know, because I messed up. So, yeah, I, I could totally see that happening. Um, and yeah, then you know he's gonna that's gonna 
put the pressure back on Louis again. Like, okay, now you are you are really give me someone um, because you know now it's a it, you know everything's going wrong. Because what what tends to happen is when a cop is injured or killed, they need to catch someone for that. Somebody yeah. has to you know somebody has to get got for that because the like the LAPD they are like a gang and of course you know they are government funded and everything like that so um you know it's taxpayers money and everything and like yeah you can't just kill a cop you can't just harm a cop like they are going to come back like the army until they find the culprit or until they get some sort of big catch you know um in retaliation so so yeah like uh and we saw that in the wire like there was um there was a few times where officers were assaulted or shot at or even killed in, in one instance. And yeah, they came down hard on the entire drug trade. Like they they raided every block and everything. So if if it's that bad, if it's to that extent, you know, that the, the raid goes wrong, somebody has to fall for that, you know. So um and if if Buckley ends up going back to Louis, Franklin is the biggest catch to resolve this. You know, so, um, so yeah, like it, it's going to depend. I guess it's going to depend heavily on what the, uh, what that conversation is like when Franklin realizes that she has stolen Teddy, and 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 also, you know, maybe at the same time he realizes that Teddy's taken his money as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if all of that happens, we already know Franklin's not going to take it well. Um, and if he if it gets to the point where he's threatening Louis's life and trying to kill her or something of that extent, she is definitely going to give him up. So. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, I agree 100 percent. And I will throw out another another alternative option, which I think is also likely is that he can just find a, a reason to bring in Jerome, just maybe arrest Jerome or hold him in 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 in, in, in prison or something, because. We already know that Jerome does not like Buckley after the exchange they had earlier this season. And we know that Jerome said in this episode, he hasn't had a, a bad temper in three weeks. So this is a test of his temper because he doesn't like Buckley. So, the, and again, that will directly impact and, and hurt Louie if she doesn't cooperate because that could be the ultimatum that Buckley gives her. He says, you're either going to give, give up somebody or I'm going to bring in Jerome. And then that's, and that right, that I think would really set it off. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And I, I can't wait. And I can't wait to see what the people say, like definitely chime in, in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so before we, we we get to like this news topic that came out this week, um, was there anything else from the trailer? Because we brought up some things from the trailer throughout the episode, but um, do you think there was anything else in that trailer that we should be paying attention to for next week? I know that uh, Franklin and Veronique they got on a, they got on one of those planes that he was flying. Well, like they were off somewhere in a remote location talking about things. Um, I mean, they didn't really show too much in the trailer. It's mainly going to be about the fallout because of this hit on Kane, because it's only like a 30 second uh, clip. So it's hard to really tell. But we know that the episode is titled Departures. So it's definitely going to be a lot of stuff that happens next week. And, and, and the whole description of next week is that Jerome and Louis separate themselves from Franklin. So they're going forward with the plan to work with Teddy and isolate themselves from Franklin. That's why I said Franklin, he's going to be very angry, I think, next week, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's very interesting that they 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 have time to get away somewhere. So I'm wondering how that, like, I'm wondering if potentially that is after he loses his money or something, or, or is it before? I don't know. But, hmm. but yeah, um, that would be interesting to see, you know, like that that scene with him getting away with Veronique and and at what point the the fallout is happening during that you know what stage is it at you know um but yeah that's interesting yeah he he, he does tell Leon he won't be there if something happens with Buckley he will not be with with uh, Kane he will not be there so 
That's why I said something might happen to Leon. He, he, Leon, somebody important is going to get taken out. So, um, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where where was remind me where where was it where they was trying to invest the money again? Like it was um, it was like somewhere in South America, right? Yeah, it's like it's a, a mortgage uh, property that they were trying to get access to. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the exact location where. They were trying to get it. I know they had money stashed in, you know, various accounts internationally, but I, I don't recall exactly where they were trying to get the property from. So if somebody definitely could let us know in the comments exactly where. But but yeah, that's what, all I do know. Because I'm wondering if maybe they're, they're going away to kind of settle that deal or something like that. But then they find out they haven't got the money or something like that. That's that's a very, see, that's a very good possibility. See, yeah, see. You see, you're you're the writer in this uh on the show here. That that makes sense. <laughs> no, you too, man. you too. But but yeah, I think that could be a possibility, and then that could be the the point where he goes crazy, and then yeah, um, I guess he'll go back to LA at that point because he ain't got no more money to spend. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, very interesting, and and I guess you know, like you said, that that episode next week is going to be focused on. Jerome and Louis distancing themselves. Um, there was a point in the trailer where it looks like Leon was talking directly to to Louis. Um, yeah, yeah, he was. So I'm wondering if Louis, I mean, if if Leon knows, then like, okay, so th these two are the, the the plug now. Like these two have taken over fully um, at that point because um, maybe I, you know maybe, maybe now they're dealing with Leon directly and they've let him know like Franklin is no longer a part of this so. see see and that's why I say it's hard to tell some of this stuff in the trailer I I I, I thought that basically he's telling them oh I hope you you're ready for what which, which, which for what's ahead I thought mm -hmm. he was alluding to the fact that they turned their back and they decided to try to take out Kane because Leon is the one that spoke to Kane in the first place so that's what I thought now if it's anything else, That'd be very interesting. Um, no, that that is yeah. What you said that is the conversation they're having. But I'm yeah. just wondering if Leon, if, if, like if Leon knows that they've. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you that, mean. Yeah, that that's they, a good question. That they phased out Franklin at that point. You know, at that point in time. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. That yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I guess to find out, but. Yeah, very interesting trailer. Like, whenever they hide a lot of, like, because this seemed like one of those trailers where they were hiding a lot of things, like, because they even showed old clips and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, they, there's a lot of good, like, a lot of juicy stuff that they're trying to hide from us, I think. Um, so, oh, yeah. I can't wait. I think, I think this is going to be a great episode next week. So, I'm looking forward to it. But, um, so, yeah, let's get to the news that came out this week. And, you know, basically... You know, we've been kind of alluding to this. We've been kind of like speculating and, you know, um, kind of trying to, you know, think ahead. But yeah, uh, they officially confirmed that season six of Snowfall, you know, first of all, it's been extended, you know, for season six and season six will be the final season of Snowfall. So, you know, uh, I guess, you know, we were right. Uh, we we kind of spoke about this a lot, and you know, we originally we thought you know even season five could be the last one, you know, at the start of the season. But then as it progressed, it became clear that um, I think there's another season because they can't wrap up all of these stories, you know, um, mm -hmm. and and make it satisfying, you know, by by the end of season five. So yeah, I think we kind of knew, you know, the the point in the story that they're at now it makes sense that, you know, there is one last season because it's like there's only so far they can go before it gets stale. Um, so, yeah, season six is confirmed and it will be the final season. So how, how do you feel about that, Rich? Well, I feel that uh, John Singleton would definitely be proud if he was still around because I believe that they originally planned for this show to be six seasons. I saw a lot of people reacting to the news acting as though oh so the show was getting canceled after six seasons no no i mean because if you look at the way that they planned out these episodes and the fact that we go back to the episode the iliad and we had spoke about that that's reference to a greek poem which is the beginning of the end that lets me know they had already planned for this show to be to end at a certain period of time 
because you see it in the actual product. Everything around Franklin is falling apart slowly but surely. It's starting. So it makes sense for it to end at six seasons. And I, I, I believe that it was Inga 71 that left a very good comment saying normally a show does, is not good after it gets past six seasons then it, it it runs the risk of starting to get bad. So I, I think ending it at six is a great number and it will finally complete the story. And I think one thing that I think fans should be happy about is that it's getting a proper ending because there's a lot of shows that get canceled and you don't get to see how the storyline finishes. So the fact that they are going to finish this, people should be happy if they are fans of Snowfall. And even though they might've been a little annoyed about this episode, don't worry, they're going to pay, it's going to pay off. Because, again, I believe everything happens for a reason. They plan and they calculate certain things within the writing and the storyline to happen at a certain time. So I definitely expect season six, as well as the next two episodes, are going to be, as you would say, very explosive, for sure. Oh, yeah. It has to be. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't see any way you can wrap up any of this without it being explosive. So, Yeah. Um, it is going to be something to watch for sure. Like I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I, I wish that you know we could get all of the remaining stuff. Just like just drop it all on, on in one day, like Netflix style. Uh, yeah. So we could binge it. You know, I, I wish it could be that. You know, but um, it, at the same time, it is fun to to have it weekly like this because then we get to have these these discussions and speculate and come up with theories. Like and all that stuff is fun. And it brings us together. So, you know, um, that's cool. And, you know, I just want to say as well that I think, you know, once it is all said and done and season six is over, um, Dams and Idris is going to be like a breakout star in Hollywood, I think. Like, he oh, yeah. Is to, he is going to climb. Like, he's going to be like the new Michael B. Jordan type, type. you know, he's going to like be landing a lot of roles, I think. So... Uh, yeah, 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 I know he. I know he's had a couple of of things I've seen on Netflix, so on and so forth. But yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think he's going to get a ton of opportunities. Everybody on that cast probably going to get a lot of opportunities, and also uh, uh, Amen Joseph, who plays Uncle Jerome, he definitely is going to get even more roles because he's already been in a couple of other shows. But I kind of feel like he can get even better roles after this is all all over with, too. So. No, he he's gonna be the new boss in power. Like he's gonna be the new <laughs> boss in America. Like <laughs> oh, oh 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 oh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I fully expect Fifty Cent to approach some of these people with opportunities yeah. to be in the power universe. So that's I think that's definitely going to happen, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and we know that Fifty does pay attention to a lot of like actors in these other shows because he he's hired some stuff some people from the wire now. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he is going to be, you know, looking for some of these people for sure. But, um, but yeah, like this, this has been a great show, you know, Snowfall and um, a lot of, there's a lot of talent involved and I'm sure, you know, everyone's going to have a lot of opportunities after. And, you know, I just want to give a big uh, rest in peace to John Singleton because this is his vision and, you know, I'm happy that he, he brought it to fruition and everything um and yeah it's, it's a great show like it's it's one of the most underrated shows for sure because i know oh, yeah. there's still a lot of people that don't watch snowfall but yeah this show is is really is really something to watch like um people should definitely give it a try but, um but yeah did you have any final thoughts before we end off here oh no i think that's very well said everything you said about the dedication to john singleton um Still, in my opinion, a very underrated show. I wish more people would watch it. Um, but if they do catch it later, whenever, just as long as they catch it, I think they will agree it's a very good show. So um, looking forward to seeing what happens in the next two episodes and can't wait to see how everybody's storyline concludes next season. Indeed. Um, and yeah, so... That is going to be it. We will be back next week to recap episode nine um, of this season, season five of Snowfall. So, you know, everyone take care of yourselves and we'll see you next week. Peace out. Peace.